Okay, maybe I'm overthinking this, but I feel like there was a strong vein of BS coming from Hanjit this time around, and I'm not particularly inclined to put up with it. Hello, and welcome to Dash of Salt with AJ. I'm your host, Ahsoka Jackson, author, podcaster, poet, and freelance proofreader. As you might have guessed, I thought about addressing some other aspects of this episode first, like what I just alluded to with Hanjit Zoe, but I figure most of you want to start off with Sasha and Gabby, so that's what I'll do. And then we'll hopefully be able to cover the other topics and give those their time. You know, I saw this comment very early on in the season with this chick talking about the fan dislike for Gabby and saying that was because Gabby was a strong woman who didn't need people's approval and all that. (laughs) Oh, is that what you think? I think we were only one episode in, maybe two, but boy, that woman picked a heel to die on. And look, this isn't about going after someone for not knowing about manga events. I mean, I'm an anime mostly myself. But even if they didn't know what Gabby was going to do in episode 8 and other places, it was still understandable for people not to like the character. I've shared previously my thoughts that Falco and Gabby sort of express and embody the opposing or contrasting sides of Aaron's mind and personality. And Gabby is definitely similar to how Aaron was as a youngster. But I also disagree with the stance some take that she's just the same as young Aaron, or that if you like Aaron, you're required to extend that fondness to Gabby. Gabby is similar, yes, but not exactly the same. One thing that stood out from the first episode is that she had a distinct sort of ego and vanity to her that I don't really pick up much from Aaron. Now, I can at least say that she has demonstrated the skill to back all that up, so at least she's not the type who brags but then can't even live up to all the swaggering. But all the same, it's still not a quality I found especially appealing, plus it's an area where she and Aaron are not alike. I was actually talking about this with other fans before, and Super Sama made an excellent point. Aaron always had Mikasa around, so even if he had been inclined to get a big head like Gabby, he never really had a chance to because Mikasa's extremely high level of skill and natural talent always highlighted the areas where Aaron had room for improvement. I do think this is one reason for some of the tension in their relationship, by the way. But I think that even if Aaron hadn't had Mikasa or his other classmates like Reiner and Annie around, actually that's interesting to think about. Aaron was in the top 10 and he was fifth in the top five. And the four above him were Reiner's team and Mikasa. So everyone who surpassed him in class was either an Ackerman or someone who had already been rigorously trained beforehand in Marley. So that makes his achievements even more impressive. But as I was saying, I think that even without having such skilled peers around to compare himself to, Aaron didn't seem like he had those tendencies as strongly as Gabby anyways. And even when it came to a related aspect, the competitive streak, I feel like Aaron was thinking more in terms of making sure he was up to snuff and less about jockeying for position per se. I don't think he was especially concerned about who got specific accomplishments as long as he was able to pull his own weight in the team and do his part in beating the Titans. But Gabby is very insistent about being the armored Titan herself, and she actually got mad at her friends for having cheered Falco on, as though Falco wasn't also a friend and someone they should be glad for. I don't object to being competitive. Heck, I have a very strong competitive streak myself that becomes evident sometimes. But I still feel like Aaron and Gabby were approaching things from different places, and that's not accurate to act like they're exactly the same. And then from stuff I've seen further on in the storyline, I'd say Gabby is in some ways more hard-headed and stubborn than Aaron was, which is saying something, and that in particular Aaron had a better ability to understand other people. And that was back when he was even younger than I'm estimating Gabby to be here. We'll get into that over time. But returning to what was evident in the first episode, we also have how she reacted to Falco's attempt to render aid to the injured enemy soldier, and the fact that Gabby herself violated warfare rules by posing as a civilian like she did to take advantage of the enemies having either compassion or respect for the rules. I really wish they hadn't cut Colt and Maga's exchange about that, um, that took place in the manga, by the way. Anyways, my point is that there is plenty of legitimate reason you might find Gabby to be an off-putting character, and that's before we get to anything involving Sasha. And this still applies if you're an Aaron fan, which y'all know very well that I am. I'm someone who loved the younger version of Aaron, not just the stone-cold boss upgrade we get for Aaron in Season 4. And for that commenter to make it a gender thing, 
look, that probably applies to a few people. The way I see it, this is the internet, and no matter how good or reasonable a stance, cause, or opinion is, there are going to be folks who grab hold to it for iffy reasons. So I'm sure there are some folks who have a problem with females and unfairly dislike Gabby because of it. But to paint folks with a broad brush and act as though that's the main reason for folks in general to dislike her? I think that's laughably unlikely and also quite unfair to the fans. Plus I've seen other folks also express annoying sentiments like there's no legitimate reason to hate or dislike Gabby and only immature or unreasonable folks do. I do think we should be able to understand Gabby to some extent and acknowledge that she does have some legitimate reasons for her behavior and mindset. She's not one of those characters who's just a jerk for the sake of it and I don't consider her evil either. And honesty also requires that we admit she does resemble Aaron some. But no, she's not identical, and no, we don't have to like her. I don't dislike Gabby nearly as much as some folks do, but I don't know if she'll ever be on a favorites list for me. Depends on how stuff plays out as the season progresses. I do actually like some of what I've seen regarding her character arc, but I can't really get into that yet. Also, as a side note, folks have made an excellent point regarding the fact that what folks label as being a strong woman often bears a strong resemblance to the same sort of behavior they'd label as toxic if it came from a male. This comments are made a misogyny thing and made it about the internet supposedly hating women who don't need or seek their approval. And I just feel that whole argument was largely misguided. Especially since what I often see celebrated anyways under language like that is this attitude of nobody can tell me anything and I do whatever I want regardless of how harmful, unethical, or otherwise ill-advised it is. Basically, it celebrates being an arrogant, selfish jerk. And I see that mindset being embraced and praised amongst young people and amongst females. And it sort of continues that idea of acting like it's good or empowering to embody the same traits that people despise and complain about when it comes to guys. I'd say some of the complaints are excessive and some are quite justifiable. And so I'm wrong to see folks wanting to take on what are supposedly the worst traits of males. But anyways, getting back to Gabby specifically, I would say she's smart skilled, very capable, and largely has good motives. I also give her major credit for being able to save so many of her comrades' lives in that first episode, even though I disapprove of how she did it. But she, as you should expect of an Attack on Time character, also has significant flaws, and we're definitely going to see more of this as the story progresses. And the brash, rough edges to her we've already seen are certainly enough to have an effect on the audience and great on some folks' nerves. Heck, one of the things I specifically appreciate about young Aaron is that despite his aggressive and headstrong personality, he was also able to take direction and defer to others in various ways. So a cockier, more stubborn and hard-headed or thick-headed character with a stronger streak of vanity and arguably greater difficulty in the empathy department. Gabby might be a version of Aaron, but it's like she's a harsher, less likable version of him who lacks some of my favorite aspects of Aaron. Now, I've spent just about an entire episode discussing reasons to dislike Gabby, and I'm not even someone who dislikes her all that much. Yet. I hate that Sasha died, but I am limited in how mad I actually am at Gabby for having killed her. I'll get into this next episode. But I felt it was important to address this general topic first, because I take exception both to the idea that we're somehow required to like Gabby, and the idea that the dislike of her is largely motivated by some type of undue hostility towards females. And if you've seen some of the early episodes of the podcast, you know that I take actual misogyny and misogynistic behavior, like trying to glamorize and normalize and encourage the sexual degradation and abuse of women, that sort of thing. I take stuff like that very seriously. And rather ironically, that sort of thing is something we've seen in current culture and those in artistic or creative circles trying to celebrate and make more mainstream. But I also have a real problem with seeing those sorts of accusations being used in excessive or cavalier ways, and I feel that the way this commenter used it is an example of that. And I found the comments and the attitude I picked up in it both amusing and annoying. Alright guys, thanks for listening to you today, and I hope you've had a great time. If you're enjoying the podcast, please don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on so you can get updates. It can help make the podcast more visible for new viewers and listeners by leaving a like, share, comment, or review on whichever platform you used to listen. YouTube, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Social Media, etc. And as of recently, the podcast is on a newer site as well, Verbal. I have an extra link for that. Now, be blessed and stay salty.